to DC today. Today is Wednesday, June 14th, and um, lucky to get all of you here on uh, on Fed Day, highly anticipated day where the Federal Reserve uh, released their uh, their statement, and, and I'll kind of walk through all of that. The markets last night, following yesterday's CPI data, inflation data, that was a little bit pretty much in line for a change. You know, it had been coming in hotter for quite some time. Futures last night were, were a little lower um, into the open, but really the market was just sort of on pause most of the day until about two o'clock Eastern when the Fed sort of made their announcement um, to keep rates unchanged. They have uh, increased rates now 10 consecutive meetings. So this is sort of a first time in about a year and a half where they actually did something different um, with keeping rates the same at about five to five and a quarter. Um, the market uh, initially sold off. This is kind of what we've seen um, <clears throat> the past many uh, different days. The Fed has come out with, with an announcement, which is that the market initially knee jerk reaction sells off a ton, yields rise, um, and then kind of markets participants are able to digest a little bit uh, and understand a little bit more about what's going on, kind of get through the press conference with the Fed. And then we get normalization through the end of the day, which is exactly what we saw today. The Dow um, closed down 232 points on the day, but probably half of that or more than half, probably like uh, 140 points of that, something like that was just related to one stock, which was United Healthcare. We don't own that, but um, uh, I guess we've discovered that uh, with uh, people during the pandemic not having surgeries and then now needing to still get those surgeries, healthcare costs might go up a bit. So that stock was dragging down the Dow itself, which is a price-weighted index. So the company at like $450 a share price and a 7% move in one day is really most of the downturn in the Dow. The S&P was up on the day just a little bit. It was up like uh, almost a tenth of a percent. And the NASDAQ was up something like 0.4, four tenths of a percent following the, uh, the Fed announcement. So we can kind of walk through this a little bit because it really is the news for the day. Um, so the left rates unchanged. So the actions of what they did were basically in line with expectations. There was a roughly a 90% chance going into this thing that that's what they were going to do. And the Fed has been really good about following the Fed futures every time that they've gone into these things. Um, we're now at about a 60% chance in July, which is their next meeting, that they will raise rates again by 25 basis points or whatever that's worth. Um, there's too much data from now until then for me to really care a ton about that. Those Fed futures change a lot uh, day to day on, on economic data. So all that to say of the um, 18 members in the committee, um, you had only two of them um, say that rates where they are was appropriate. Um, nine of them, or, or sorry, all 16 of them um, uh, wanted rates to be higher sometime before the end of the year. And, and the nine of them wanted uh, two more rate hikes. So call it 50 basis points before the end of the year. So it kind of gives you a breakdown of actions that were somewhat in line and, and frankly dovish. In other words, they didn't hike, they kept rates the same, and then words which were more hawkish. Um, and to me, what that says is, I, I really do think the Fed wants to be done with this thing. I, I, um, they're going to be data dependent. And so if things in the, in the inflation world come out hotter than expected, they have every right to raise rates. But I just think that um, the statement today allowed sort of the more hawkish people in the committee to get what they wanted uh, while also being able to sort of hold rates steady. Um, so with that, I mean, you know, um, one of the um, um, one of the, the other parts to this thing today was really <clears throat> um, it, it wasn't all bad. I mean, they, they revised the economy up, not down. So they took GDP from an estimate of 0.4 percent. Uh, to up 1% on the year, which is which is something good. They took the unemployment rate, which they thought would hit 4.5% by the end of the year, um, to just to, just at 4.1% for perspective. We're at 3.7% now. So they, um, all in all, um, I, I don't look at this as necessarily anything bad. Um, I don't think markets do either. They recovered. Um, and I don't know, most people know this but or realize, but we're up something like 22% on the S&P from the low of October. Um, so I guess we can sort of call that a technical bull market, although the Dow is up something less than 20%, about 18% from the low. But I say that just because, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the economy has actually been weathering this really pretty good. There's not a lot of reasons to think that 
um, or to be real bearish here at, at this particular moment. And the fact that, you know, they're going to kind of keep rates where they are and let things play out, I think is a good thing. Um, the, um, some of the other things for the day, um, you had another inflation data metric, which was PPI. So the producer price index yesterday, we had CPI came out in line with expectations. The producer price index today was actually quite lower than expected. It was, it was negative 0.3% month over month, which is an annualized 1.1% increase, which is really low. It's the lowest since December of 2020. So we are seeing inflation come down. Um, in those numbers, which which is again some justification for what the Fed did today, um, which I think is 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 uh, generally a move in the right direction. Um, you um, all in all, you know, I, I think um, as we get through some of this, um, you know, the the most interest rate sensitive sectors of the market, for example, real estate, we're continuing to see weakness there, although that seems to be sort of leveling out a little bit. Mortgage applications today were up. Technically, on the week, about 7%, a little over 7%. Um, rates have come down on the long end of the curve, which, um, which I think is the reason. But just remember, they're still down by almost 27% year over year. Um, yields on the day were a bit higher. You know, Immediately following the Fed uh, announcement, they sort of popped up quite a bit. Um, we ended up closing just modestly higher on the yields. The 10-year was about unchanged on the day. It was up like three basis points, something like that, um, on the day. So not a lot to report there. Um, volatility has pretty much collapsed in the market. So with prices going up and um, people feeling a little bit better here about where interest rates are going to kind of potentially peak out, um, the volatility index is down far below where it was pre-pandemic. So we're at something like a 14 on the VIX versus like a 35 uh, during uh, uh, the height of volatility last year. So all those things are, are fairly positive. Um, Going into tomorrow, um, Dave will be back with you on DC today uh, for tomorrow. Then we'll have Dividend Cafe. Uh, we've got a good amount of economic data coming out tomorrow. Um, we've got some uh, uh, jobless claims. We've got some manufacturing data that will come out, uh, uh, so on and so forth, uh, which I think will be, be useful. Um, but all this to say, much of this anticipation with uh, the Fed meeting, they did what basically we thought they would do. Markets took it in stride. And now the story is going to be fundamentals, which is what it should always be. Um, and earnings technically uh, are looking to be um, uh, coming in fairly, fairly well. So uh, all that to say, uh, as far as what we're doing at Bonson Group and, you know, with your portfolios, it's a lot of business as usual. We do read into a lot of these numbers specifically into how they affect uh, our individual holdings. Um, but uh, I'll take today as more of a glass is half full and I'll take it as if we were at the bottom of the eighth inning now or somewhere middle of the ninth inning here on where we are in this rate tightening cycle uh, moving forward. Uh, all that to say, I appreciate you listening. Uh, if I don't speak with you, um, uh, happy Father's Day this Sunday to all, all those dads out there. Um, uh, and otherwise, uh, please reach out with any questions and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.